Hello and welcome to Cosmological Arguments. I'm your host, John Bannon. Why is God intelligent? So you've read the Cosmological Arguments and watched the videos, and you're persuaded that God is real. The final question, and arguably the most important question, is why is God intelligent? If this uncaused metaphysical cause or first cause of physical reality is unintelligent, then it wouldn't even know you existed, and you certainly couldn't have a personal relationship with it. So how do you know God is intelligent? Uh, there are 10 good reasons why you can know that God is intelligent. I will give them to you uh, in the order of Number one is the best. So, the number one argument is the argument from possibility. This is also contained in the cosmological argument by the same name. God being uncaused cannot be made of parts, and so the decision on what is made real in physical reality cannot be predicated on the workings of parts. God must be able to freely choose to create any physical reality that is logically possible, because without parts there is no causal chain of parts necessitating one creation of physical reality over another. In order to freely choose to create physical reality, God must know of all logically possible creations. Intelligence requires knowledge of the possible. God must have the greatest intelligence possible, because God has knowledge of all that is logically possible for physical reality. So what this argument is saying is that God is uncaused. And that means God is not made of parts, because otherwise those parts would cause God, and he couldn't be uncaused. So because God uh, isn't made of parts, there's no internal mechanism or workings in God, no causal chain of parts that would force God to create one physical reality as opposed to another. Therefore, God must have the ability to freely choose to create any physical reality God wants. And because he has this free choice, he must know of all logical possibilities uh, for physical reality. How else can you choose to create something if you don't have the knowledge of the thing that you can create? So uh, intelligence requires knowledge of the possible. If you look at intelligent beings, they all share this in common, this knowledge of the possible. They have a consciousness which allows them to various degrees simulate their environment and have an understanding of what is possible, what could happen in the future. Uh, uh, unintelligent life forms don't have this, like a tree doesn't have this consciousness, this awareness of what is possible in its environment. So in order for God to be able to choose uh, what to create, he has to have knowledge of the possibilities for creation which means he has to have intelligence. Intelligence. Not only that, it has to be the greatest intelligence possible because he has to have knowledge of all logical possibilities for physical reality. Well, that's knowledge of everything. So that's the greatest intelligence possible. There is no intelligence in the universe that can match the intelligence of God because God knows of all possibilities for physical reality. And nothing in the universe could possibly have that knowledge. So God's the most intelligent uh, being that is real. All right, the second argument is the argument from quantity. This is also a cosmological argument, uh, but I'll give you the section that deals with the intelligence of God. God has the power to actualize all logical possibilities in physical reality. 
those logical possibilities increase in number as the intelligence of God increases. Therefore, God must possess the greatest intelligence logically possible for God in order to possess the power to actualize all logical possibilities in physical reality. What this argument is saying is that there's a connection between intelligence and the quantity of what you can create. So uh, as an, an analogy, for example, think of the Mona Lisa, the art masterpiece hanging in the Louvre in France. That was created by Leonardo da Vinci, but only an intelligence could have created that thing. Uh, an unintelligent thing could not do it. So intelligence allows the creation of physical things that unintelligent things cannot create. So when you're talking about God and the ability to create anything that's logically possible in physical reality, not only could an intelligent God create anything that an unintelligent God could create, but an intelligent God could create more, a greater quantity because intelligence can create things that unintelligence cannot. So because um, God has to have the ability to create uh, all that is logically possible in physical reality, in order to uh, have that full extent of creative ability, this everythingness, the, he would have to have uh, the greatest uh, decision-making capacity logically possible in order to get that greatest extent of quantity. So uh, that infers that God must be intelligent, uh, at least to the intelligence of a human being, uh, and obviously much more so than that. All right, on to argument number three. Uh, this is the argument from the submaximal cosmos. God is either intelligent or unintelligent. An unintelligent God must actualize all that is logically possible because an unintelligent God could not hold back on actualization. We do not observe the actualization of every logical possibility in the cosmos. Therefore, God cannot be unintelligent, but must be intelligent. So this is saying that, well, it's a, it's a dichotomy. God is either intelligent or unintelligent. But an unintelligent God uh, wouldn't be able to hold back on creation. If that sort of God would have to create everything that it logically could create. So it couldn't hold back on creation. So um, because in the cosmos, when we observe reality, we don't see everything that is logically possible uh, created. That means that it can't be an unintelligent God because an unintelligent God would have to create everything that is logically possible because it can't hold back. It doesn't have the intelligence to hold back. It's, it's a mechanism. It's more mechanistic. Uh, it, it can't, it can't hold back on creating things. If it, if it is possible creating it, it has to create it and it's got to create it now. Um, whereas an intelligent God can hold back. On, and on everything that it could logically create. And so you would see less than everything that is logically possible in creation. And that's exactly what we see. So that's an indication that God is intelligent. All right, the number four argument. The argument from an intelligible universe. Uh, this is also a cosmological argument, so if you want more detail on it, you can review that cosmological argument. If the world were not intelligible, it would not be that which we can in principle come to know. But the world is that which we can in principle come to know. Therefore, the world is intelligible. If there were not something analogous to human intelligence in the constitution of the world, then the world would not be intelligible. But the world is intelligible. Therefore, there is something analogous to human intelligence in the constitution of the world we call God. So this argument is saying that, well, we can understand the cosmos. Uh, we can create mathematics and physics. 
Um, we can understand it with our minds. So it must be something that is understandable. Otherwise, we couldn't come to understand it. So the thing that creates it must be intelligent in order to create something like the cosmos that is intelligible, that can be comprehended by an intelligent being like us. So that means the creator or the cause of the cosmos must also be intelligent. Uh, and obviously, this cause of the cosmos, who can create an intelligible cosmos and all the amazing complexity of the universe, uh, must be extraordinarily intelligent, far beyond that of a human being. All right, the number five argument, God is a personal being. God must be spaceless, timeless, immaterial, and eternal. There are only two possible candidates that can be described as spaceless, timeless, immaterial, and eternal abstract objects and an unembodied mind or consciousness. An abstract object does not stand in causal relations. Example, the number seven has no effect on anything. God must be an unembodied mind who brought the universe into being. All right, so this argument says that uh, the only things that can fit the description of God being spaceless, timeless, immaterial, and eternal is these metaphysical uh, objects like mathematics, like a number, or consciousness uh, from an unembodied mind. So there's only two possible candidates. It can't be uh, an abstract object like a, like a number, number seven, because a number seven doesn't cause anything. It doesn't stand in causal relations to anything. So you can't say, well, the number seven caused the universe, because the number seven doesn't cause anything. The only thing that's metaphysical in that sense, which can stands in causal relations, is consciousness. Uh, a mind. In this case, since it's God, it would have to be a disembodied mind. So the only candidate that exists for God is a disembodied mind, and that means it's intelligent. Uh, the number six argument. God delaying creation of the universe. If the cause of the cosmos were in eternal, non-personal, mechanically operating set of conditions, then the cosmos would exist from eternity. Because the cosmos has not existed from eternity, then the cause must be a personal agent we call God. So this is saying that if the creator of physical reality were unintelligent, uh, it's a, it would be a basically a mechanistic cause, it would have to act uh, immediately. It couldn't hold back. Uh, and that means it would have created the universe essentially inf an infinitely long time ago. Yeah. But because the universe was created uh, later than that, then that proves that this cause must have the ability to hold back on creation, which indicates it's not a mechanism of any sort but rather a, an intelligence, uh, because only an intelligence can hold back on creating things like that. Uh, the number seven argument. Uh, now, this is an argument from Thomas Aquinas. It appears in his Summa Contra Gentiles, Book 1, Chapter 44. The next four arguments, the last four arguments, are all taken from uh, St. Thomas Aquinas. Uh, this is the, uh, intelligence is never the instrument of unintelligence. So, in no order of causes is it found that an intelligent cause is the instrument of an unintelligent one. But all causes in the world stand to the prime mover, which is God, as instruments to the principal agent. Since then in the world there are found many intelligent causes, the prime movers cannot possibly cause unintelligently. So what this is saying is, you look at uh, the world, 
you never see a case where an unintelligent thing is um, instructing an intelligent thing what to do. Uh, intelligent things uh, are can be the instruments of unintelligent things, but you don't see the reverse case. So in, in the case of the prime mover or the or God, the uncaused cause, then that that cause must also obviously be intelligent. Uh, so God would have to be intelligent. The eighth argument is intelligence as a perfection must exist in God. So no perfection is wanting in God that is found in any kind of beings, nor does any manner of composition result in him for all that. But among the perfections of creatures, the highest is the possession of understanding, for by understanding a thing is in a manner all things, having in itself the perfection of all things. So what this is saying is that uh, God has the perfection of all things. So because a, a, a human being or a creature can be intelligent, God must also be intelligent and must have the greatest perfection of intelligence. And indeed, intelligence is the greatest of all perfections because intelligence allows you to understand uh, the essence of all things, what these things are. Uh, and therefore, uh, God must have this highest perfection uh, and the highest intelligence uh, that is possible. The ninth argument. God must be intelligent to fix the definite ends of nature. Everything that tends definitely to an end either fixes its own end or has its end fixed for it by another. Otherwise, it would not tend rather to this end that, that to that end. But the operations of nature tend to definite ends. The gains of nature are not made by chance, for if they were, they would not be the rule. But the exception for chance is of exceptional cases. Since then, physical agents do not fix their own end because they have no idea of an end, they must have an end fixed for them by another, who is the author of nature. But he could not fix an end for nature had he not himself understanding. So this argument is saying that uh, <clears throat> all things in nature tend towards an end and or purpose. And unintelligent things can't fix their own ends. Um, so ultimately, because nature tends toward a fixed end, you need an intelligence, an intelligent God, in order to fix that end or purpose. The last argument, perfected essence requires an intelligent God. Since then, physical agents do not fix their own end because they have no idea of an end, they must have an end fixed for them by another who is the author of nature. But he could not fix an end for nature had he not himself understanding. Everything imperfect is derived from something perfect, for perfection is naturally prior to imperfection as actuality to potentiality. But the forms that exist in particular things are imperfect for the very reason that they do exist in particular and not in the universality of their ideal or the fullness of their ideal being. They must therefore be derived from some perfect forms which are not under particular limitation. Such forms cannot be other than objects of understanding, seeing that no form is found in its universality or ideal fullness except in the understanding. Consequently, such forms must be endowed with understanding if they are to subsist by themselves. For only by that endowment can they be operative. God, therefore, who is the first actuality existing by itself, whence all others are derived, must be endowed with understanding. So uh, what this is saying is that all physical things uh, have an essence or uh, a nature that can be described. 
And that nature is an understood nature. Uh, it's not the physical thing itself. It's an, uh, essentially, it's an idea or an understanding of its nature. And the perfect uh, understanding, the perfect essence, is only found in consciousness or uh, ideas, the ideas of this thing. Now, um, God would have to have this uh, perfect uh, understanding of all things uh, that God creates. Um, and therefore, God must be intelligent in order to have this understanding of the nature or the essence of the things that God creates. All right, so... Those are the 10 reasons why God must be intelligent. Uh, I hope you learned something. This is a very important question. It's often overlooked, uh, but it, it, it can be extremely helpful um, in understanding why it is that, that this uncaused metaphysical cause uh, is intelligent, can understand me, knows that I'm here, and that I can even pretend to have a personal uh, relationship with. And that's because God is intelligent and is the greatest intelligent that is possible. All right. Take care.